it's a, I just want to say it's a privilege and honor to have Wayne Harrison here. Um, I've known Wayne for a number of years. Uh, I've been following Wayne's work. Um, he's uh, a world-renowned author, uh, 36 books, uh, 14 uh, books, he's, and he's done four coaching audio uh, DVD. And he's also a um, former professional player and uh, a UEFA licensed coach. Uh, a premier NSCA premier diploma holder, also a staff coach. Um, he's coached in different countries. He's been a technical director for different organizations. So i um, really happy to, to have Wayne here and I really thank him for his time. So uh, Wayne, the floor is yours. Yeah, hey, thanks, Mark. Thanks for inviting me. Um, first of all, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. yeah? You can just nod if you're on picture. But here's the thing, I want it to be interactive. So I really want you guys to be involved and not just me talking, yapping all the time, because that's boring. And I want to just ask, I got, so I'll have questions to ask you. And then maybe as we go along, you've got questions to ask me, um, but let's just get fired in. Um, and when you do ask a question, let me see you. It's nice to see your face, see who I'm talking to. I'm not talking to a ghost. So, right, so apart from my family, obviously, my, my second love is soccer, and my first love in soccer is scanning because so few people focus on it, in my opinion. And from my experience over the years, um, it's, not, um, it's not something people do a lot of, and I, and I just think it's something we need to really get the kids to try and, and use it to improve their, um, to Im just improve their game. So I call it teaching a one-touch mentality. Um, for various reasons, of which I can tell you later, but just for now, let's just get straight in, straight in for the jugular, and go see what it, see what all the fancy dance in scientifically call it: vision, perception, and anticipation in elite level performance. Yeah, and I just call it rubberneck. So the kids like rubberneck. They don't. I don't go well. Uh, excuse me, Johnny, but. Uh, are you using your vision, perception, anticipation in your elite level performance at the moment, please? So I, that's not going to work. So I just shout rubberneck, which means, can you look around? It's so simple. But moving on to this at the end, um, scientifically, it's proven it works. So that's good. So I researched it. So then what they talk, I'm talking about what, what's going on in the head of the player, because I, I, I just think we... Well, me personally, I think we train the body more than the mind. Um, so everything begins in the head and I'm developing the mind. So again, the fancy dance, the scientists, they call it visual exploratory frequency. And I just keep it simple, stupid, kiss. So that's easy. Now then, can I, I'm going to ask a question right away. Think about your training. Do you do anything specifically for the mind? I mean, like, 100% focused on, I'm working on the mind today, not the body. And if you do, tell me what it is, please. It's only coffee. It might have a Bailey's in, maybe, I don't know. Anybody? Think of a session you do when you go in training. I'm going to, see, I go into my training and my first thought is in every freaking session, I'm going to, I'm going to train them on scanning. No matter what the session is, I'm getting scanning in because it's so important. So, you know, I kind of, I change it all to suit scanning. But ultimately, you're using the, they're using the body, they're using the physicality, but scanning for me. So anyway, I'll move on because this is, a, it's a long presentation. I want to get it done before, new, uh, before midnight. So, yeah. Now, so for, to me, it's the most important aspect of the game. I've said that. Um, and it's a difference maker in, in a player, an average player, a good player, or two very good players, but one's good at scanning, one isn't. I think the one with scanning is going to do better in the game, personally. So what's the difference? He's a good one. It's, it, this is significant. I, I want to get you... I want someone to freaking answer me here. What is the difference between a one-touch mentality and playing one-touch? Because a lot of my training is one-touch. Rightly or wrongly. Um, um, uh, just be, uh, being aware enough that you can uh, make a one touch, be aware of your one touch option. Right. 
So what might, what might one touch be that one that playing one touch isn't? Uh, well, one touch would be receiving the ball and being aware of your one touch option, right? And realizing it's not a good option and taking a second touch rather than just playing it anyway. He's too clever, Mark. Already, Howard, you're too clever, man. <laughs> you're right. You're, you're spot on. I call it one touch mentality because um, to be successful, if you don't know what you're doing with the ball. You're never going to succeed. And so I say, if you think I've only got one touch in your mind before the ball's coming or wherever it is, I've only got one touch, even though, as you said, Howard, you've got as, you've got as many options as you like. That's, that's what it's all about, one touch mentality. One touch playing is just playing one touch. But I found over the years when I've done this, the best way to teach a one touch mentality for me is to play one touch because it forces the kid it conditions the mind. If they don't, if they don't scan the field with a one-touch mentality, they're never going to keep possession of the ball because you know what it happens. It comes to their feet. They look at their feet. They stop the ball. They think, "Oh shit, what am I going to do now? Oh, it's too late. They've just taken it off me." Here's me dad. Here's me ninety-one-year-old dad coming in and interrupting the meeting. Now I told him, "I'm having a meeting, dad. Don't come in." All right, so he comes in. Reverse psychology. But he's ninety-one, so God love him. So that's that's the difference. But, but a lot of people don't like one touch, you see, and, I, and I'm saying it's very relevant to, um, to what we're teaching. How does it equate to youth soccer then? Um, what do you think? I mean, you learn it at 18. What do you think? You learn it at seven. What do you think? What's better? I mean, it's obvious. So I think the earlier the, you learn, you teach this, the better. Now then, I'm just going to clarify and immediately that what's really important is you do all your technical stuff to, before you start on this stuff, or you can do it alongside it, of course, but you must get them technically good before they can do this, because what's the point in having the one-touch mentality if you can't freaking trap a bag of cement? So you've got to make sure that they know that they're technically capable. So that's the most important thing, because a lot of people ask me, you know, well, they say I don't like particular types of players. That's what they say to me, because I like a one, I've got a one-touch mentality. Um, what do you think people say to me? What do you think kind of players I don't like? Anybody? It's obvious. Come on. Uh, players with the head down, the unaware players. That as well. Yeah, but something else, something more dramatic. Think about it. I'm teaching one touch mentality. I'm teaching it in a one touch training environment, but not all the time but then I'm letting it go free after doing it one touch to get their minds focused on looking around before they receive it. And then they can do whatever they like. So what do you think people accuse me of? Anybody? Not passing. They don't like dribble. I think I don't like dribblers. That's basically yeah. it. And, and I love dribblers. Dribblers are great. But so what one touch mentality does, it's teaching the, dribble, the dribbler when and where to dribble. When and where and why to dribble, not... So I have to nail that one early on as well because I love dribblers and I'm not just a one-touch player or, or coach, but I just think it's it's the it's the, the thinking process that's important. So I nicked this from somebody else. I, I don't know who it was, but I, I thought it was good. Three types of soccer player, and I'm sure you can equate to this. Those who don't know what's happening, I mean, they just boot it, don't they? It just comes to me and boot it. And we're all dealing with different levels of players. I know that in different ages. Um, but I still think it applies to everybody. Those who know what's happening, but only happening as it is happening. So they get the ball and then they react. I mean, you see that all the time. Yeah. Even if they've got a good touch, you know, they control it, then they react and then they, and it's too late. And then it's those who, the third one is those who already know what's happening. Um, they anticipate the situation and that's the one touch mentality uh, rubberneck guys and girls that, that uh, I think can, make, can be the game changers. So anyway, that question was for, my, from, for players when I do it for players, because off, all of them think they're better than they are, to be fair. God love them. So I asked my team, right? And th my team's, look, Minnesota, we're not the centre of the universe, are we? we it, for soccer, we know that. But for, for Minnesota... My team is a very good team. And to be fair, they could, they could compete pretty well outside of Minnesota. They are a, a bit of a good team. 
So I asked them, I said, I asked them the same question, where do you think you are? And I said, this is where I thought they were. And I said, you're on a two to 2.5, but nobody's on a three yet. And I think they would have been taken aback by that because they're probably the best team in Minnesota, under 14 boys. And at that age, you know, it's like we're all cocky, weren't we? And um, so they were a bit taken aback by that. I said, well, not, none of you are, are, have got this nailed down yet. I mean, be, I've been working on four months now and none of them have really nailed the principle down. Some are better than others. Um, I've got a couple who, big, powerful, under 14, great dribblers, strong as an ox, can get away with murder for the moment, but tend to turn and run into people who can get out of trouble because they're good technically. Um, but as they get bigger and stronger and everybody's the same, th they're going to need this ability. So I, there's one of them in particular, he's bloody brilliant, he, but he doesn't scan yet. And he doesn't see the game quickly enough. When he can do that, he's going to be amazing. And he will. I know he will because he's a great kid. He wants to learn. So the ball's on the way to you. You're focusing on it. I'm looking at the ball. Um, and I, I need to be able to anticipate what's next. And like you said, Howard, you know, it's, it could be many touches. It could be dribble, pass, turn, run with it, shot, cross. Um, but I'm having to assess everything around me as well while the ball's coming to me. And, I'm, and the things I'm assessing, space, players, teammates, opponents, how much time do I have? Um, and at the same time, I'm just focusing on getting a bloody good first touch, you know? And a lot of kids are like, ooh, you know, they're a little bit anxious when the ball's coming to them. That's one thing we've got to cure them of. Even the good, good players can be anxious. Um, so you can't do all this, all these things if you're looking at the ball. So that's what I tell them. And then I asked them how, how good do they think they are? And, and I did ask them. And before I told them where I thought they were, a lot of them thought they were pretty good at this. But then I pointed out, I had a video I was showing them when, when, we, when I videoed them playing one touch training. It wasn't very good at the start. And then three or four months later, now they're so much better. And I can show them that. And they can see how they've improved, but they're still not there yet. But it's, it's a great improvement. So third category is what we want. So I call it, I call the one touch mentality, look, scan, think, decide, succeed. So look and scan are the same. And thinking, I'm thinking, I'm looking and I'm thinking at the same time. Now I've got to make a decision uh, and hopefully it's successful. So that's my little, um, what do you call it, Mark? What do you call it when it's something that's like that, when it runs in? Anyway, it's my little, um, I don't freaking know. Slogan? <laughs> my slogan, that's it, slogan, thanks. And you'd help me out there. So, look, scan, think. It's clear what it is, but how, how can you evaluate it as a coach, do you think? So you're looking at it, you're working with these kids, right? And you want to see who's, who are good scanners and you want to see um, where they're good and where they need help. Well, how do you break that down, do you think, in a mental and physical process? So you're not just looking at the kid as holistically as one, per, you know, everything's in one. You're breaking it all down. All the things that they need to be good at this, what do you think? Anybody? Well, th first of all, they're going to scan. What, what do you think's next? So I've scanned, I've had a look, right? What have I done? I've made a decision based on the scan, right? Now the ball's coming, or it, it might not be near me yet. So I'll have to scan again and again and again and again. Just keep looking until, and then as it gets towards me, I'm, I'm starting to think now I'm going to have to make a decision on something. So the ball's coming to me. As it's coming to me during that moment, I scan once, I see a certain picture around me, but then I, I look back and, and then I look away and the picture's changed. So I have to scan again and change the decision. So again, it's, it's really enforcing quick thinking uh, on the players. So, what, I, what I'm seeing is um, it's about making that decision early, early decision as the ball's arriving. What do you think? I mean, now this is really simple, the next bit. What do you think can also be involved in this in terms of them being successful? What have they got to do physically, mentally? What do you think? Break it down. Break it down. Well, there's one, there's one that, that I think is massive is 
getting their feet ready. How many times do you see kids when their feet aren't ready? I mean, my 14s, they're, as I say, they're good players, but, but the, the footwork's terrible at times. They don't have their feet ready, so they need an extra touch or two to get it, to get it moving. Or, or the first touch isn't the best. I mean, so, and like most of us are dealing with probably players not as good as these, but some of you will have better players than these. But generally speaking, we're working with a lower level of player. So what do you think? So here's the three, here's the thoughts that go on in the head of a player, right? These are, this is before this breakdown that I'm telling you about. I've broken it down into thirds. In fact, I didn't do this. I, I, was, I did a presentation last week and a coach told me this and I thought, that's great, that. I'm going to put it in. So, and I hadn't thought of it like this. So this is breaking it down halfway to, to the main part. So there's three, there's three thoughts. The ball's arriving, what I'm going to do. The, I've got possession, what I'm going to do. The ball has been moved on by me. What am I going to do? So you've got all those, those things to be thinking about. So it's before you get it, as you get it, after you get it. So I would, so again, how would you describe that as a thinking process? And how would you break it down into moments? Just think about it, please. <laughs> I'm just yapping too much. I want you guys to get involved. Come on. Think about the moments that you have to break it down. We've already said we have to scan. We've already said we have to make an early decision, but it might change as the ball's arriving. But we're, we're at least making early decisions and we're, and we're looking at all our options. And the first option might be gone by the time the ball comes. So I've got, but I've got my second option because I looked, I looked in the others at the other side as well. Very most, well. I mean, when I receive the ball, my first thought is to move it quickly forward in, in an attacking direction. Yep. And if and if by the time I get it, it's defended, then I fake that and then look to adjust the ball in another direction. Okay. And uh, and if that's not on, then I fake and go in another direction and uh, and try to move the ball as quickly as possible or dribble into space. You're clearly a dribbler, Howard, aren't you? Definitely. <laughs> 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 I, I know, hey, Wayne, I, I know yeah. if I was coaching this, I would be looking at the starting position of the player, how they're, uh, they're entering the space that they want to receive, their body shape as they're receiving, because that'll tell you whether or not they've actually been scanning before they've, they've, they've received the ball. Right. So, I mean, I know that's, that would be my, but that'd be my starting point anyways. That's great. Anything else leading on from that? Didn't I say the feet first? So I said, I got to the feet part. So you've got to the next part, which is the body position part. And that's vital too. Because how many times you see the ball comes into a kid and they're, they're square on. So that they can maybe, you know, if they're clever, they can do a fake and turn and all that. But generally speaking, the body's square on. They don't get an angle of support. The support in a straight line. So already what you've said, it's so vital that they, they can do what you said. So that's another part of it, yeah. Anything else? I mean, I say communication. I'll tell all the coaches, me, I just say, don't expect communication from anybody. No one's going to shout man on time turn. If you get that, that's great. I mean, my team, as I say, they're a very confident bunch of lads. They don't talk like they should. And we, we know most of them don't. So I always say, you've got to communicate with yourself in your, in your mind. So you don't expect someone to tell you there's a player behind you, man on. No, you've got, to, you've got to see it for yourself. So communication's in there. If you get it, it's great. If you get it, it could be visual. It could be, you know, pointing, whatever it is. But I think ultimately, it, it, you're not going to get it. So that's the next. Let me go, let me go in. And I want, want, I want to ask one, two more of you before I go into what I think it is. And hey, if you don't agree with this, you've got to tell me, please. And you've got, but you've got to give me a good argument to say. But you must... You must debate it if you don't agree with me, please. Because that's what this is about. Because you might say something I never thought of, and I think, frick, I'm going to change that. That's a great idea. That's how we all learn. So um, please don't be af afraid to um, get into me if you like. Anything else? Uh, I, I know the, the one thing you haven't mentioned is the position on the field. I mean, maybe that's for older players, but I mean, are they in their defensive third? Are they in the middle third? Yeah. You know, which, which direction are we going to be taking the touch? depending on, on, on the phase of the game. You see, there's some else. I can throw that in now. That's good. Different thirds. I've never, I've never broken it down to different thirds. Well, I mean, the direction that you're going to take your touch will vary depending on where you are on the field. I mean, I mean the chance in... you're taking will vary, won't it? The decision yep. you take will vary. So I'm going, to I'm going to remember that one. That's a good one. 
Anything else? Never thought of it like that. Is it that? Go on, somebody else, please. Uh, the timing, uh, how long you have before the ball gets you, and yeah, timing of of the reception, and then yeah. timing on the ball itself. Yep, yeah, that's something as well. This is great. This, come on, keep throwing them at me. So, Howard, we wouldn't advise you to do what you were telling us in the freaking defending third. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sean. <laughs> No problem. Yeah. No, but I get what you say. I, 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 I go close to the net and ask for the ball. <laughs> Fair enough. No, but what you said was totally relevant because in the right areas, as Sean's pointed out, the right areas, that's what you want to do. You want to beat players, don't you? And that's that's one of the things that's good about this one-touch mentality. It's not teaching you to, to dribble. It's teaching you when and where to dribble. Anything else? And I'm going to throw it. I'm going to open mine up and... Tell me what you think about this then. I mean, I've, honestly, I've, I've worked on, and ladies, if there's any ladies watching, um, I've worked on this a lot of years and I keep changing it around and I've added a couple of new things even the last uh, the last year or so. So it keeps changing and I'm, I might squeeze something in on thirds of the field now, Sean. But you can't claim it. Sorry. Right, where are we? There. This is what I see. This is how I see it anyway. Just have a quick look at that. And just, just think that through all these six moments, they still haven't touched the ball. But these are the things I think is going through their heads. Not necessarily, you know, one at a time, but these are the kind of things that they should be doing to be successful. So, in other words, we're creating a mental process before the ball comes, in my opinion. This is all my opinion. Doesn't mean it's right. But to be fair, for me, it's worked. So, so look, scan, think. That's the first part. That's good. And then I call it skill, the skill factor. That's the decision. What do you do? Do you dribble? Do you pass? Um do you, do you turn? What do you do? And I think that's that. That come, when I first started, I had that decision way down the process after the feet, after the body, after communication, and it was ridiculous. It's actually right in there at the beginning, because you've still got time. As was it, Alex? You said about the time thing. You might have still have time to change your decision, mightn't you? As the ball's coming, but you need to make a good one early, in my opinion. And then your feet preparation. The kids and this is a really major one i think we should it's a major problem with with players for the players i've worked with over the years i've been doing this a long time and foot preparation we don't do enough work for that um body position like was it you sean that said that and balanced and open and another major problem i think for getting square on and not opening your body up to change the direction of play the communication thing and then but then from the body position thing i thought I thought to myself, and I just added this one, the no-touch turn and fake. So when we're playing one-touch, what the kids are starting to do now is that they're, they're doing all these things now and they're getting much better at them. But the no-touch turn and fake is the real big one that um, I see happening. And it can happen in a game so much as well. And, and that is, well, the ball's coming to me. I've got to look behind me. I know where the space is. I know how much time I've got. I know the pace of the pass. If the pace is good, I can let it run across my body. I can fake a defender and change direction of play without touching the ball. And I encourage them that because they've only got one touch anyway. So I always say, save a touch. Save a touch, change direction of play, but it, and save a touch at the same time. Well, the only way they can do that is if they look and they scan. Anyone disagree with any of that yet? Or there's anything you want to add to it? Because I'm doing the next bit where we've got the ball and then we've moved the ball on. If you want to see that. Go on then. So now we've got possession of the ball. Control. First touch control. We all know it's the most important touch in the game. But I'm talking about one touch. So they don't get a chance to control it. So. Again. They're going to decide 
whether they control it or whether they play one touch or, wh or whatever they do. So, but on one touch, all they can do is play one touch. So the control thing doesn't come in on that one. You can argue with me in a minute with that one. So now there's a technique. So if they, look, if, if they're hopeless, they might be the best scanner in the world, but they ain't going to be successful because the technique's poor. So now you've got to make sure before all this, you've got the how, the pass, the run, the, the technique's got to be good. So that's the next part, the technique now. That's the succeed part, we hope. Now, tempo. I mean, I don't know about you, but my team play 100 mile an hour. They just freaking cannot. I've got one kid on the, no, two kids on the team who can slow the game down and change the tempo or brilliant at it. And I still, I believe you can do this with one touch as well because you just, you, you, op you open the distances up between each other in possession. So you play in one touch, but you slow it. You're still slowing the tempo down. I still think you can slow, change the tempo when that's um, by playing one touch as well. So now, oh, I've only got 10 minutes left. Bloody hell. And now it's the movement off the ball. Now this is someone said about spacing, tactical mobility. This is, to me, this is the biggest, one of the biggest factors as well um, in what we don't teach enough of. And that's positioning off the ball. Because one touch mentality isn't just for the player receiving it. It's for all the players. So it's not, so, you know, I'm receiving the ball. My teammates need to be getting open for me because I've only got one touch in theory, even though I haven't. So that I want them all to think we've all only got one touch because it's going to force me to scan. It's going to force me to move in an open space for my teammate. So I think that's really important. And then the final one, um, which, which I'm sure you see yourselves as well, that transition moment when we have it till we lose it or we, um, we lose it and then we have it. And I always think when you lose it, it's harder to... It's a harder mental process to immediately try and win it back than when you win it and then you and then you've got it. So I think um, it's really important that this this is in the equation because it's a big part of it. I think. So I've got eleven points there, and um, who, what do you think of the top four? Anybody? And listen, in about eight minutes, I'm gonna I'm gonna come out. Of this and go back in again because um, I, have, I haven't paid for the for the for the long one. It's the free one because I'm a cheapskate. So we can only get 40 minutes at a time. All right. So what do you think? What do you think of the most important four? Look, I'll go back to the other one. There's that one, and there's this one. What do you think the four most important things are, and what could it depend on? Think about it. Anybody? Number 10 hits me hard hardest. Number 10? Yep. Yeah, I'm yep. always barking that. Yep. <laughs> Anything else? I think number one, because you don't get to 10 until you get the, the first, the first few, right? Yep. 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 Absolutely. I mean, what the, te the, te the technical is critical. I mean, if they, if they cannot physically one touch a ball to another player if, they, yeah. if the technique is not there i mean that's critical they, they have to have the technique and that's why i say it depends it depends on you guys and your answers will depend on your players you see by now i won't include technique because my guys are good at tech good technically but most of us will include technique because most of them aren't good technically so again it depends on the players you have as well as to what, what you think are the most vital. I think all these things are important, but there's four, three or four in particular. Anything else? Uh, two, I think. Skill decision. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the players, they have the know-how, but just don't know how. Like, they know how to do it, but just don't know how to do it. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Yep. I'm with you. Like yeah. they can't, I'm sorry. I'm, what I mean is that they can do it, but just don't know how to do it. No, I, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Anybody else? When he, uh, right, I'm going to, what I think is, I think what Howard said, definitely the first one. I mean, that's what it's all about, really. Um, obviously, the skill comes with that as well. The decision. Um, if your players aren't very good, absolutely technique. If they're very good, I wouldn't include technique because I, I would see that they're already technically capable. I think feet preparation is massive. Do you know, I think they're all, they're all important, to be honest. But um, 
I think number 10. Uh, was it Joe? You said number 10. I think that's freaking massive, that one. That's really massive. Um, I think you can get away with control. And, well, maybe not. Con maybe not. It depends. Again, that comes back to technique, first touch, like you said, Sean. So I won't include those two, technique and control, because mine are decent. I think the higher the level you go, the bet that if the players, if they learn tempo, that's if, that's going to make a big difference because I say it's 100 mile an hour. Um, and I think we've got to work on that a lot with our players. I do. I do personally. So what? let's come down to the, the nitty gritty. What do you think a one touch, um, a one touch mentality, a one touch player teaches, not mentality, one, one touch. What do you think it teaches? I think uh, awareness of what's yeah. going on in the field. I think right. I think that's that's because if you're scanning like you should be, you know, uh, ten times before you receive a ball, mm -hmm. you're you're gonna have a better awareness of what's going on in the field and yeah. how the game is being played. That's the first one for sure. Anything else? Uh, movement off the ball. Yeah. In support. Yes, absolutely. Why is that? I think I explained it before because obviously the player that's receiving. His teammates or her teammates know that he or she may only have one touch, so I've got to move off the ball to help them. So, yeah, that teaches – playing one touch teaches movement off the ball, absolutely. As does, you know, as does playing with many touches. But I just think there's some things that I've, that I've written down on the next sheet that aren't as obvious, you know, for um, to support a one-touch one player. Let's get straight into it. So I think technique, control, and um, when you let it go. But technique on the first touch is important. Um, I guess you call that two touch, don't you? Mobility, what you've said. Um, body position of foot. You see, it's, it's kind of the opposite to what we've said is good. We're saying, well, it's got to be foot, foot position and, and foot preparation communication i'm just going through that the order of those other things that i said um and when it doesn't work it's because of these things that these, these things that don't work so positioning off the ball problem solving development creativity and imagination well people think i think some people think dribbling and dribbling and taking people on is creative and imaginative but you can be imaginative and creative playing one touch just by just by the way you change the change the manner of the game it's physically challenging because it is actually hard work because everyone's got to work really hard because we've only got one touch. So it's definitely physically challenging. Angles of support, again, if we're, if we're in straight lines, it's not going to help the player who's receiving. It's going to help not going to help me uh, who's receiving next. So I've got to think about my angles of support. And then op opening, like what I think what Howard said at the start, opening passing lanes. So by moving off the ball, you're opening passing lanes. Um, but you must move off the ball to get that up that passing lane because I've only got one touch. And then it's very competitive. I mean, it really is. I mean, with my lot, they, they really work hard at it and, um, you know, they, they want to be the best they can be. Right. What's next? Why will it, my, why might it not work? This is, these are obvious questions, but. I Wayne, must... do you want do you want to log out? It's like there's two minutes left. Oh, yeah, I'll log out. Let's log out. Okay, let's everybody okay. log out. And we'll come yeah. back out. We'll come back in. Okay, cool. Okay. We're 